Hello again everybody and welcome to this video on upper respiratory wind noises and their causes. My name is Simon Hennessy, here at Angus Eli Jack Wynne Hospital. So quite a common thing that we see here at Angus Eli Jack Wynne Hospital is horses that present to us from owners and trainers that tell us that the horse is making a noise during work. Now what we know from the literature is that owners and trainers can be extremely sensitive when it comes to identifying upper respiratory or wind issues, but they're not very specific as to what area of the upper respiratory tract or the wind that is affected. So the easiest way to do this is to try and divide the noise into either an inspiratory or an expiratory noise. So when we think about inspiration, we think that we realize that a negative pressure is generated within our chest to suck air into our lungs. However, when we think about the horse's anatomy and we melt away the external features and we look internally, we can see at least two areas where the, the airway narrows quite significantly. And we know that when we've got a negative pressure drawing in that air and we bring it to a narrow lumen, then that negative pressure is going to be dramatically increased. So these two areas then will generate a much higher negative pressure. And so when structures are not tightly held out of the way, they can collapse into that airflow and be associated with noise. So this seems to be seen at the nostril, which is not all that commonly associated with issues or upper respiratory noises, um, but when it is, it's often due to an excessively large false nostril or ail or fold. But more commonly, the larynx or the throat tends to be quite often involved. And this is due to a paralysis, due to nerve damage, and then a subsequent atrophy of the muscle or dying away of the muscle, and then an inability to pull either the vocal cord or the cartilage of the throat out of the way, so it gets pulled in into our wind flow. And oftentimes when that happens and we've got maybe enough muscle contraction to keep the cartilage out, but the vocal cord falls in, this tends to be associated with a whistle, whereas when our cartilage falls in, that tends to be associated more with a roar and generally exercise intolerance. So that's inspiratory noises. Now that is, is not the only cause. The inspiratory noises can also occur due to multiple other things such as medial deviation, aerobicotic folds, epiglottic retroversion. There are quite a lot of different things, but by far and away the most common thing would be throat or laryngeal problems. And so if we think then about expiratory problems, we're thinking about structures that struggle to stay still or to maintain tension in a high airflow environment. So a bit like when you're listening on a stormy night and you hear the doors rattling and the windows shaking, the same happens when a high airflow goes through our upper airway. And most common structures that tend to be associated with, again, are the nostril or the soft palate. So we all hear the nostril, we hear that kind of flaring of the nostril when horses are expiring and, and, and working quite heavily because those nostrils tend to flutter. But similarly, when you have a soft palate that tends to billow in a high airflow environment, we tend to hear a bit of a gurgle. And so this is often associated with what's known as a rostral plate instability or when the front part of the palate becomes unstable and moves in the air and gives us that gurgling sound. And then this can eventually culminate in what's known as an intermittent dorsal displacement or when the palate essentially flips up. And when this happens in you and I, we start to breathe through our mouth. You know, but horses are obligate nasal breeders, so they can only breathe through their nose. So when that palate flips up, it's a bit like you or I getting a bag put over our head. They choke, they stop, and that's one of the three major causes for horses to pull up in the middle of a, middle of a race. Again, expiratory problems, most commonly associated with the soft palate, but not totally. There are other things that can be involved, such as, for instance, epiglottic entrapments are quite commonly uh, associated with expiratory noise. But in most cases, the upper respiratory noises or the wind issues that we tend to come across are complicated and they're often a mixture of inspiratory and expiratory noises. And unfortunately, the best way to determine what noise you're dealing with is an overground endoscopy, whereby you're looking at what your airway does while working. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you very much for your attention. Stay tuned for next week when we're going to look a bit closer into laryngeal paralysis or paralysis of the throat.